on making All jokes. right, welcome back to another Daily Dose of Mike Miner. All right, funny, funny, funny. There's a good question that came up. I want to talk about clipping, string inverters, micro inverters, uh, power optimizers, so you guys kind of understand. I know you just went through some training on the power optimizer, but take a difference. The question we'll start out with was clipping. What is clipping? Well, when you have a 215 watt micro inverter and you have a 260 watt panel or 280 or typically not a 280 because they will have a 250 but anything under like a 275 the difference is is that system even though it's 260 watt panels that system's only going to put out up to 215 max see how that works because that that micro inverter is actually only inverting 250 watt 215 watts of power so there's a loss difference so what that means is throughout the day, as the sun's going, the solar panels are ramping up throughout the day, it can hit a point where it's got perfect ideal conditions, you've got the sun, no shade, and it's just pounding on those panels. You can hit a point where you're maxing out at the 215, even though there's still some room left that that panel generally would produce more, but because of that microinverter, it's clipping. That's where the term clipping comes from. It causes it to off. clip off and flatline okay. instead of continually increasing. Now, we all know a 260-watt panel, it's not like it puts out 260 watts every second of the day. Right. That's the manufacturer rating, right? That's right. what it says, okay, this is a 260-watt panel. Maybe it only puts out 247 at its ideal peak time. Maybe this one puts out 256. You know, each one can be different. Each panel can be different because you're talking about those little cells. Right. They're not exactly the same. It's not a perfect science, right? But with, the two, with using a 215 or, say, a 250, you could get that clipping effect. Now, how, why, why, and that with the traditional string, that string inverter, will, it basically inverts the power coming from those 260s, so you don't have the clipping effect. If they keep pushing and pushing up to their mark, their highest point, it's going to go with it. And then it's going to basically ramp back down, you'll have a perfect curve, right? Right. That's your power curve, instead of clipping off. Now, what's made... The micro, or excuse me, the micro, what they talk about that makes it so much better is you have earlier ramp up time. Right. Because each individual panel, as soon as it starts to receive some daylight, it doesn't need that much uh, amperage or whatever to cause the system to turn on, to basically cause the inverter to turn on so it starts inverting the power. Unlike with a string, all those panels have to activate from the sun. All of them have to produce and it has to hit a certain amount of amperage and then it kicks on the system. Right. Then it starts producing power. With an individual inverter, it starts earlier. And one, one panel could be producing power. I was going to show you, I'll show you guys when I'm done, but on mine, I have the individual inverters, the micros, and I was going to show you a day back in July of last year where you see a perfect morning by like 5.30 in the morning, I would already produce like one watt, right? And by like 8.45, 9 o'clock at night, I produced one watt. With a string, it probably would have been five, you know, 6 o'clock or something, then it just basically shut down. Right. It's like it just continues to run. So what makes the microinverter so much better in a sense, even though it may clip, and let's say you lose some minimal power here, you don't have perfect days every day. It just doesn't happen. I'll show you on mine. I, I had to go all the way back to July of last year. I just picked July. I was going back this year, and with all the rain and clouds, you'll see like this. My power. I wanted to show you a nice curve and then a flat line clipping on mine, and I found one in July. I'm sure during the summer there was plenty more I could show you, and I'll show you on my when I log in. You can see that effect. Well, what the what the difference is? There's not that many days throughout the year that you're going to have this chunk of change lost because of clipping. It's mainly just during the summer. The rest of the time it just doesn't happen, right? But it does give you pretty much this at all times of the year to a degree minimal amounts of ramp up time, faster ramp up and power actually being produced in the mornings and evenings more than a string inverter does. Right. So they say, and they've done tons and tons of studies, and that's why they say the microinverter is much better, because this power, this power combined equals more than the loss, which now makes it better than a string. Okay. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because right. this equals more than what you're losing from the string okay. versus the inverter here. Okay. So that's kind of the clipping effect. Now we just learned about power optimizer. What makes power optimizer different? No clipping. Right. No clipping necessarily. Yeah, no clipping. The cost, the biggest deal is the cost. So a power optimizer basically takes the best of both worlds. Does the capabilities, the cost and stuff of a string inverter keeps your cost down compared to this. It's quite a bit less, we know that, right? right. 
but it also helps with giving a 25% or more boost, like you saw, up to 30% mm -hmm. more boost, yeah. which now can give you some more time here, right? As long as you get that amperage kick up. Doesn't, uh, doesn't lose this during the summer, actually probably optimizes it a little bit more, Yeah. right? Gives yeah. it even more than it would normally would clip, and then the same thing over here. So how they say that the power optimizer will work better is because it's the best of both worlds. Gets rid of the clipping and optimizes, and it maximizes the most you can get out of that 260. Yeah. Instead of being an individual inverter. So if you had to look at an analogy sense, it's a bunch of little cars running around with small little motors that are, this car starts to slow down, the other ones keep going, right? right. That's with a regular uh, microinverter. This car starts to slow down, these keep pulling their weight. That's kind of what a microinverter does. Mm -hmm. String inverter, one car starts to slow down, is your strong as your weakest link, so the entire fleet of cars all, ooh, mm -hmm. so they're not delivering their load, right. right? Well, imagine if you took every one of those cars and you slapped a freaking turbo in them, optimize the power coming out of them, and if other, and they're still connected on the stream, but if other ones started to die back, the optimizer ramps up and makes the other cars move faster and stronger. Even though this one starts to ramp down, it doesn't affect all the other cars. So in right. theory, it's kind of the same idea, except you're running around with a bunch of turbo-charged cars, solar panels, creating good power for you. Turbo charged solar and you don't have to worry about with the individual inverter, all the cars are hauling butt and they're getting at their prime and all of a sudden, the guy comes out and says, whoo, slow down for a second, you're gonna clip, right? right. With, the, with the turbo, let's blow past that, right? Just keep building power. Just keep building power. So, A, when you look at it, are they all work? Yes, do they all have an advantage? Yes. Power optimizer, that's what they say. The overall difference is better cost as the individual microinverter, some other options but pretty much it's the cost, it's gonna optimize. They're probably somewhat, depending on the scenario, as good, if not just a hair better than an individual inverter for production, so they're similar. These both are definitely better than those traditional. Right. It's an upgrade, definitely both. So you got individual motors, and you've got optimized turbo motors. Right. You know, which one would work best for your scenario? Right. And that's where we build and design, guys. Um, Shade affects entire string. Another big difference with them, if you have shading, you have a, uh, a system like this. And let's say that the, the shade tree hits these first three panels. With a string inverter, it knocks all of them down. Anything that's connected to that string, that line, all those panels. So if any of these panels here are connected to those three, they all shut down. They lose their power. They decrease 50% or whatever. It's like they all slow down, like I was giving the description. With the microinverter, this one shuts down, this one shuts down, this one shuts down, and these keep running, right? And with a power optimizer, the boost kicks in, which tries to help offset the shading as much as possible, even though they start to shut down, but the boost allows these guys to continue to ramp up and continue to add more power. So the theory is, is they work just as good as a micro in shading as well, yeah. right? So yeah. best all of, these ones make boost up to make up for the for loss make up for the loss for those over those. there. That's yeah. exactly right. So that's your theory. So if you got if you got a product, that's where you have to look at. If you got a product, a it always comes down to quality. What's it going to do for you? What am I getting out of it? Because everything you're doing in solar is all about selling what the electricity. Isn't that the important part? Mm -hmm. If you can get, let's say with a stream inverter, you can get eleven thousand kW. I've been using that number today. With the microinverter, you can get 11,960 kW. And with the power and optimizer, you can get 12,001. And this one's 20,680. This one's 22,680. And this one is 21,450 or so. Yeah, we're going with the power optimizer. I don't know. You tell me, what would you do? I'm going with the power optimizer. Right? It's the best value. Best value. So that is the big difference. They got the upgrade where you have the twenty you get the twenty five year warranty on the power optimizer, but you also can upgrade and get the twenty five year warranty on their string inverter as well. So it's just taking the best of both worlds, put it all into one, keeping the cost down and doing the same as all the rest. But it always boils down to the customer of this, 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 and how much does it cost me? Yeah. Right? So that's the traditional versus the micro versus the power optimizer. 
I, I, I believe it's all based on the scenario of the home. What works best for the client? Like what will give them the best bang for their buck and save them the most money? What will make the biggest difference for them, right? Right. Because even, even you saw in that, in that chart with absolutely zero shade. Power optimizers still were 1.7% 1 .7 1 .7 better. percent better. So, you know, even it's not much, right? But maybe you look at the cost. Maybe you're sitting here with a perfect ground mount with no shade facing the perfect direction. Everything's ideal. And is that cost worth it? Or do you just go with the string inverter, the traditional, because there's no offsetting lying factors that could cause a problem, right? So you have to look at the money and the cost and determine that. Well, depending on the typical cost of what it costs for the micro, I mean, the power optimizer, you know, what do you do? And so that's how you can kill, how other companies kill these, the micros, because they'll say, well, you've got, you don't have shading. You only want micro because you have shading. They don't talk about the ramp up and the D-ramp, then they talk about the clipping, the bats, right? Right, right? Well, when you talk about the power optimizers, you're getting rid of the two things the bad that they can talk about. Right. And they can't say it costs more money because it's minimal. It does, but it's so minimal, yeah. absolutely minimal compared to yeah. a microinverter. Still less than a microinverter. Right. So this is how you can get out there and compete in the market and make a difference and be able to offer these options and what makes best sense for you, for the client, for you to present to the client that's going to save them the most money. The best bang for their buck, right? right. Any questions on that? Well no, that's yeah, real covered. And you guys get the clip in when a customer asks you potential oh, yeah. of that happening. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's all a difference of opinion, but it all boils down to the numbers. But I do kind of feel like why you're limiting. Like I can run 400 miles an hour, but I have a device that's limiting me to 340. I'm not a big keen on being limited. Right. I would. I'm probably the type that likes turbo. I like my <laughs> turbo polar pop. Representing, That's right. you got to pay me if I say the name. Whoop, whoop, right? <laughs> Funny guy. So, I mean, it's just a way of thinking, though. But if this cost me too much money, I don't know. Maybe I'll find something different. But it's eighty-nine cents on sale. Get yourself one now. Forty. I think they went to forty-six ounce now, or forty-three ounce, or something. Anyway, extra large. Unlike the ninety-nine, I paid eighty-nine. All a dollar. Uh, All a dollar. A dollar. Every size a dollar. Uh -huh. Every size a dollar. Yeah, but they don't have the extra large. Okay. So, what's best for the client? What makes the most sense, guys? Um, this is another tool for your weapons. Another tool for your bag. Once again, traditional string versus micro inverter versus optimizer. What's the best value for your buck? What's going to make the most sense for you? And how to present it? Any other questions? Cool. That was another daily dose of Mike Miner.